and welcome back to our surviving Java series. Yep, um, I've tried recording this episode twice already, and I've killed roughly around about. That's gonna come down and hit me, isn't it? Okay. Um, I've tried recording it twice already, and cost myself around about 16 hours worth of game time. Uh, trying to do this external wall now. Initially, what I had done is I had the wall. Well, first of all, this is the original line the one closest to us and then I tried to bring a line in three blocks uh, further in so that way we would have a bit of a gap in the wall but I built it all the way up and I built it all the way up all the way round in an effort to sort of do a time lapse of it and I sort of winged it I didn't get the circle measurements down correctly so the circle was a little bit skewed in places a little bit off so I ended up tearing it all down and tearing it all down when you build out a glass as well just takes four times as long and if you add in the fact that we're under all up oh my god these oh, these puffer fish I swear to god are the vein of my life at the moment um having tearing glass down under water it is a oh great it's gonna take half out to come back to me it takes so long uh so you have to make sure that you're sort of standing on the ground in order to sort of mine it efficiently but what I ended up doing is tearing it all down that took around about six hours this morning to do that and then I went into a sort of test world created a circle so then I knew exactly the measurements and rather than bringing the circle in I've taken it out by three blocks and then I've sort of laid the gap wall uh, going around where I want our sort of pillars and then in between them we are going to have um, where are you there you go we get some glass on us as well and then we can say concrete and glass so we want them as far away from one another and we want to make sure that they stay on this circular pattern now as you can see because we're adding yet another ring um, the four towers that I've sort of outlined on the outskirts are obviously going to have to be pushed out a little bit further just to make them match and the fact that it's now further away from our conduit towers is a hell of a lot better if you look at my line I was doing the measurements and making sure the circle is all correct so what we're going to be doing is in these gaps we're just going to want to make sure that they're on the furthest points away so none on the inside blocks and none on the inside blocks on this side so we're just going to do one little segment so we are 100 percent sure as to the design of this whole thing because am i building it all over again i can tell you for a fact right now no no i freaking ain't um <laughs> we want to take these all the way up to the surface and then ugh, i've got two different mindsets as to what i want to do when we get up to the surface one of them is we take it up to there and then we have an upside down actually let me just get some bits and pieces on me so we can figure this out together uh, if we do that can we get some uh, none of you uh, if we get some quartz quartz steps as well and then I do believe we yeah little grass so I want to implement like a sort of naturist oh wow it's got proper dark I want to add a sort of a little bit of touch of colour and a little bit of green to the build. So we bring this all the way up to say about there. And then we can have the glass come up as well. Um, we are going to have to obviously go around underneath and replace the cobblestone with uh, more appealing block. More than likely going to be the white concrete. And then we can bring these guys around say like that around the bottom. And then when we get up to the top, I was thinking that we could sort of wrap the stairs around and then have a set of inside stairs. Unless we shall we do something like that. Mm -hmm. And then have a set of uh, inside stairs. That's going to look funky if I do that hmm. all right so I've got a sort of workable concept that I'm quite happy with so uh, the only button I'm not a hundred percent settled on is this little ridge bit here I don't know whether to go with diorite or quartz quartz looks a lot cleaner but diorite sort of blends it in and a mixture of both we can probably see how it looks and then on top we've got a grass so we've got the indent of a little water line just to sort of blend it in a bit 
and then it sort of is going to be far enough away from the watch tower that it's not going to look cramped um, which is the only thing I was sort of screwed up last time because uh, well not the only thing <laughs> the skewness of the circle that I done freehand was absolutely horrendous if I can uh, sort of salvage a screenshot from the failed attempt then I definitely will and I'll show it on screen roughly about now if I have got it but otherwise what I want to do is then clear out the water in the middle of this and then do lines of end rods as center as I can all the way down and around but what I'm thinking of doing is uh, doing one whole segment and then taking a step back and looking how looking how no stepping back and seeing how it looks is what I want to say but I think if we zoom in on our little minimap we can sort of get a rough idea of how it's going to look on here so we're going to have like green segments coming around here which I really want because then I want them to bleed in from the watchtowers coming to the center and then have a sort of a natural scape around center where our main sort of palace is going to be uh, if that makes sense so it sort of all links up with the outer walls and then it sort of works its way in and I, I actually do like this sign um, if we can sort of get a little step back and just get an aerial view yeah so you're coming in with that going all the way around provided that it's done uniformly <laughs> I'm gonna go with that u u uniformly I don't think that's a word but yeah screw it um, as long as it's all uniform and in equal proportion and it doesn't look disproportionate to the watchtowers that we've got well the conduit towers I still need to do something with the insides of them um, I was meant to be putting coral reef and lighting them up but I may just light them up with the actually I can't do that without taking out the water I might light them up with um, what are they called sea lanterns because shifty who is uh, one of the people one of the new uh, people on the server has actually made a guardian farm and uh, he's got readily access to a lot of sea lanterns but yeah what I'm going to do I'm going to build up this segment and I'll bring you back once that's done alright then guys so it took around about two and a half three hours to put this thing together and I actually really like the way that it's coming out the I've replaced all of the blocks at the bottom so we've got all of the concrete so it's nice polished off and then we've got the end rods going up and it's joining at another block at the top I still need to go round underneath and actually half stab underneath the dirt just to hide that uh, it's not too much of an issue because it's unlikely unless you're swimming directly up to the wall and underneath like that you're unlikely to see it but it's going to be one of them things that I know is there uh, I've also gone along and where the end rods come up I've actually uh, just broken a block of the grass and replaced it with a sea lantern with a carpet underneath and that is just so that this um, doesn't become a bit of a mob trap because I did notice that when I was building it it was spawning mobs like crazy because obviously we're in the middle of the ocean there's barely any spawnable spots anywhere around here because I go lighting up the caves uh, I lit up all the caves mainly because of the creeper farm over there but what I want to do is actually see what this thing looks like at night which is uh, main thing I have asked everyone on well the other two that are currently on the server not to sleep I think Captor's AFK so I don't think he's a worry and uh, Red Acto over there has already agreed not to sleep so yeah I guess I'll catch you back in a few minutes when the sun starts going down and it's night time so let's sort of take a fly back and just see how it looks the sun hasn't completely gone down yet but this side it does look dark so yeah, and as you can see, it proper stands out, which I love. Um, basically, you've got all the sea pickles over around in the coral reef, which is lighting that up. And then the fact that the entire underneath, as well as on top of the pathway, is illuminated. I really do like And the thing is, like, if we go into the water, we get hit with the conjure effect. Before we even, yeah, see it. So we don't really notice it when we're under the water that much, but when you're flying in and flying around, and obviously once we've got like the main palace building up in the middle, then the view of that going around, and obviously as the sort of area progresses, what I'm thinking that we could probably do is um, probably do some art trays going along this, or flowers or custom trees just something to sort of fill it out because obviously I don't want it just staying dead flat but for the time being um, as a start on the outside perimeter walls it's not bad going at all and it's relatively easy to do so there's not like a huge amount of detail in it but there's enough just to make it interesting and 
uh, it's not basically it doesn't look noisy or crowded with too much depth or too much detail and the fact that you've got glass on both sides of the wall it adds more depth than you actually need because then you've got the um, end rod light strips in the middle as well as the columns either side which is done with the glass so it feels like there's a lot more depth than there actually is especially when you're flying in from different angles because you can see pretty much all the way through it and then you've also got the little depth on the edges of the pathways using these little uh, waterlogged stairs which just add like a little blue trim just to sort of fade it in nicely so I'm happy with that what we're going to do is probably crack on with a time lapse doing the other three quadrants which is going to take me into the better part of tonight and uh, yeah I guess I'll catch you back for something else after we've hopefully got these other three done <laughs> guys so it's now around about a week or so after I started these external walls and I'm actually really happy with the way that they've come out and the four towers I'm gonna have to make some adjustments to them because the gap between the two walls is only 14 wide and if I was to make a tower with a diameter of 14 this edge the pathway side to side is seven wide and that would be seven wide taken out of 14 which means we'd only have a three and a half block gap either side to make it more symmetrical which is impossible in minecraft without it being lopsided so what i am going to end up having to do is actually make the towers come out further onto the pathway than i initially expected to which is perfectly fine because obviously the main section underneath the water this was sort of capped off not as I wanted it to be it was more just a point of capping it off just so that I could clear the center of the walls with for, for the end rods so I did initially think I could do a ellipse shaped tower sort of like an eyeball shape but that I tried a couple of designs with and it was not coming out looking even remotely nice so I sort of bailed on that idea now and I'm just going to make the towers bigger probably instead of a diameter of 14 that would be what like 15, 16, 17, 18 yeah about a diameter no that would be 14 and then each one would be 2 wouldn't it 
So it'll be 14 here, then 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So between like 20 and 22, I reckon, should be a decent sized tower to take these up. And then once I finally design them, should hopefully inspire me to move on to our main sort of palace building in the middle. Which means we are actually making some serious headway on our base. But what I have been doing in the last week while the weather has been torturing me over here in the UK. Uh, I've It's been way too hot for me to record. Like even now I've had to turn off my fan in order to record. Because otherwise you'll hear the constant whirring in the background. And I forgot to do that. So it's actually the second time recording this segment. But I have actually been going around and just helping the others on the server as best I can. Rather than having to try to focus and record i've just been doing what i can to help whoever sort of needs it as and when i'm online and in return of that i was in the, i ended up being slightly not so helpful to um a couple of people and yeah uh, i don't it's I've, I've got three people that could have spurred having trolled me with glaze terracotta uh one of them I was thinking Mac because we've had to remove some of the data packs that alleviate some of the strain on the server just to ensure let me get rid of all that information that's my sort of admin monitoring information that I need up but in order to sort of alleviate some of the strain off the server because we are getting sort of more and more new active members and at our peak we're having around about nine ten people online at a time it can get a little bit strenuous and the data packs were proving to be a little bit more intensive than what we was thinking especially those that track and constantly ping the server for information like the stat trackers and whatnot so uh, one of them was the terracotta wrench which is i was pretty much the only person that actually used it but now that it's gone i had a little whinge at mac about it so i thought that he may have done it he's claiming to have it and not done it but they have replaced my entire storage area floor with terracotta and all of the item frames that didn't have items in with glazed terracotta and it could be Mac or I'm thinking Psychotica because I was over there and I decorated their skelly spawner as well as I made my own bedroom over there and I decorated it with the black glazed terracotta and when I went back over there yesterday I went over there to initially help but I couldn't find a way of being useful so then I ended up just pelting snowballs at them for around about 20 minutes and so this could be retaliation of me doing that and then Jack I don't reckon I reckon Jack's more the one who has dropped off the ores as well or as well as the bone blocks from the river skull farm because you get a ton of bones and they know that I'm desperately in need of bone meal for running my tree farms and that is very helpful I don't think that they've done that but after annoying Psychotica for around about 20 minutes yesterday I ended up going near the well into the jungle near where her base is sort of at and we ended up well Jack ended up coming over and helping me look for some pandas and then we boated them over to my area and we've well I went off last night and I literally just had them in boats sitting in here, named them both so they wouldn't despawn or anything and left them just in a sort of blank room and uh, whoever's come along with the terracotta I'm assuming has teamed up with whoever's come over and decorated the panda enclosure and I'm not too sure if this is going to be a permanent feature but I definitely want to try breeding them and try to do something with the pandas because I've never actually played with them all that much besides using them as a sort of gimmicky type of mob but I have heard that they can be somewhat useful. Now we have got a bunch of the ores I'm going to have to go through. And I am in the process of making a ton of rail for our ice boat pathway. So we're chewing through the gold on that one. Uh, let me quickly go and put you guys. But what I do want to do before finishing this episode off. And we put uh, words if I take a breath. Uh, we have made a ton of progress on the base which is absolutely fantastic. Um, I need to make sure that I've got hoppers the starters that's always handy and then make sure that I've got some chests as well because I know that I've been tearing through these also uh, 
I need to top up my food as well. That's never a good sign. Um, how is my other breadstone chest looking? Yeah, no chest. I'm going to have to go through these and make sure that I've got all of the components and everything that I usually need in my redstone test thing. Redstone test thing? No, redstone boxes. Yeah, what I want to do is actually go and make just a little quick contraption over at one of the piglin bartering. Well, actually at my piglin bartering farm. And that's to convert the... Uh, what do call it? It's the basic fire resistance potions into eight minute long ones because obviously it's a little bit of a waste having them not be eight minutes and at the moment if you saw in my main storage room I've just got like a brewing sand in the middle which is where I've been doing it and it's very very sort of tedious and just one of them little things I'd rather just have automated and the system that I'm going to be doing is not going to be overly fancy it's not going to be very overly technical I'm just going to have it running off of a standard hopper clock just so I don't have to worry about having to do the auto timings off of it and yeah well um, we have got a big old area over here which is more than capable of holding something of this sort of uh, nature so yeah let's just clear a little area over here okay so I cleared a little room we're going to make sure that it's centered with our elevator just so it doesn't drive me up the wall with it being off centered and then we're going to want to make just a little bit of room over here and what I'm thinking is we want our hop art doodad to be in here and then we're going to want our actual brewing stand we've got a bunch of them in our go-go chest want that like so and then we're going to want to feed obviously a bunch of different stuff into this so we're going to want I do believe uh, one side is for blaze powder one side is for the half brewed potions and then the top is the actual ingredient so let's say if we done that and then we can do one of these say like that and then we can do one of these like that and our main concern is locking this hopper and the one underneath so if we were to say bust out just a this is very uh, precarious leaning over this thing I do not like it at all it feels very very unsafe if we do something like that so clear a little bit of room okay and what we're going to be doing is just having a hopper clock sort of locking and unlocking the actual hoppers but I do want a block that I'm not going to accidentally break have we got anything like that okay I think we've got everything in place the hop clock has 58 items in which is just about enough time I think it may be slightly longer than necessary in order for the potion to finish brewing but we are however going to need redstone for the upgraded potions coming into the top as our main ingredient we're also going to need blaze powder we've got uh, yes we do grab you and then blaze powder that is from this side is it not yep so we've got that feeding in and then our potions that need upgrading go into here and that should be our output but we have got a bunch of crap on us in well we're gonna need that so-called crap in order to actually patch up the roof area so let me do this and just put all of that stuff in there for the time being and then our redstone bits and pieces can come into here and then our uh, not you it's you is that good uh so what repeaters on us thank you so let's grab a bunch of the fire resistance potions obviously not the splash ones because we're just not interested in them but a bunch of the three minute ones now the first batch that we throw in there may or may not convert straight away uh actually yeah if we leave it locked on this side that way they won't actually go through until we've got enough in there which is perfectly fine now uh, i may put an on off switch for this thing um not overly concerned so much i may actually filter out the non 
well the splash versions just get rid of them like void them out just because they tend to get in the way and I very rarely use splash potions of fire resistance and I'd quite happily get rid of them let's just uh, grab the rest of these guys and top up our chests so yeah they have now just been upgraded and they should go through and that's our first batch which is happy days there we can keep on filling these guys up I should really stop just so you can see what's going on but uh, I want to be able to top up this chest so wow we've got a bunch of them Ugh. Good thing about this is that it doesn't need to be rapid and it doesn't need to be overly quick, it just needs to be able to convert them without me having to do it manually. So, yeah, so let's just see the sort of timing on it. Now, obviously, you've got the cooldown period where it doesn't need to be nearly as long just for letting the potions back out, but it should be around about three seconds. So, one, two, three. And then they picked up, yeah. And then we got the cooldown period while it's on that side. If I really wanted to speed it up, I could link both of these down to the activation method and ag ag and add a secondary timer just for letting the bottles through and letting the other ones feed in. But I really couldn't be asked to do that because um I can just set this up and put all the potions in here while I'm waiting for the gold to feed through the piglins when I'm over here. And this way we get fully upgraded via resistance potions. And it's very quick, simple, cheap, and uh, not a bother. But the only thing I'm a little bit worried about is uh, gas spawnings. I have had a odd gas spawn in here somewhere. And for the life of me, I've been trying to figure out where. I think it may be somewhere around like this type area. Because it's just nearly a 4x4x4 four by four by four area. So I may go around and whack some uh, basic stone buttons everywhere. Well, not everywhere, like spamming everywhere, but you know what I mean. Uh, is there a way of us like concealing the majority of this? Oh, yes. Um, I'm going to have to do some blackstone magic over there. And then... Mm, we do something like that. So, um, <laughs> not too sure if I like that noise all that much. Do something like that, and then what other blocks have we got? We've got dead coral. Uh, you, awesome. Then you, fine. You. It's not looking too bad. I am gonna have to obviously go back there and fill out the spots that do not look fantastic. <laughs> And probably put some upside down stairs above the chest to prevent it because now I'm not going to be able to open this one, am I? Because that was silly of me. Uh, hmm. Yeah, I'm going to have to grab some more blocks just to tidy this up. But this will now completely, fully, and auto upgrade our potions of fire resistance because if you have a look in my chest, I'm actually out of um, the upgraded versions. And yeah. Playing in the Never and helping Jack clear their area for their base, which I was doing for the majority yesterday. Yep, uh, fire resistance potions definitely would have been a handy thing to have. But now that we've got this, it's not going to be a problem, and we can upgrade the rest of these. And probably, you know, I probably am just going to go through and get rid of all of the splash potions because, yeah, I, I don't really need them. But I may sort out a secondary system for doing this automatically. So have a dispenser just feeding into a hopper. That feeds uh, before going into this line of chest. So that way it will shoot the items out that are splash potions and instantly smash them. While everything else would sort of just drop as entities and be picked back up. Which is the plan of getting rid of them. Uh, I need to figure out ways of dealing with the iron boots though. I'll probably smelt them in a fashion. But yeah, nevertheless, that's going to be it for me today. Uh, we've made a bunch of progress on our base area and we've now upgraded it. Well, we've got a little potion brewing upgrade station over at our pickling bartering center, which is very much needed. And hopefully you've enjoyed today's episode and hopefully I'll catch you all in the next one. Bye bye.